Millennials. We've been told they've been living in their parents' basements for the last decade, but now it looks like they might be the driving force behind the housing boom we're experiencing, and it looks like this could be a trend for years to come. Stick around, we're gonna break this down as soon as we get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is your realtor, Nick Isgro with eXp Realty here in Central Maine. As you know, on this channel, we cover all things real estate here in the state of Maine, particularly in the Central Maine market. If that is of use to you, please do go ahead and like this video, hit the subscribe button, knock that little alarm bell, and you will be notified every time we put out new content. As we said at the beginning, it looks like the millennial generation, that's me, had been living in our parents' basement for a decade. At least that's what we've been told. Right? Well, despite these depressing anecdotes, it looks like it is the millennials who are actually stoking this housing boom, and it looks like this is a trend that could happen for years to come. Last week, Dana Peterson, who is the chief economist at the conference board, put out an article in Barron's Magazine that breaks this down, and I found it so interesting. I really want to get into this today so you can have this information and determine for yourself whether you think that this is going to be a primary driver of housing prices, because one of the main topics that we've been talking about is how long are these housing prices going to stay up and how active is this long market going to be? Looks like it could be here for a long time and it looks like it is the millennials who are going to be the main drivers of that. Now what is it that could be causing this generation of buyers to be causing a housing boom? Shrinking debt, expanding wealth, growing families, and low interest rates. Now let's talk about who the millennials are. Now according to this article, millennials are those people who were born from the years approximately 1980 to 1995. Now if you're like me, I was born in 1981, especially if you have older siblings, you might really be that micro in between generation that identifies with Gen X almost as much or if not as much as you do with the millennials. But regardless, that's roughly where we're gonna fall. Now right now, that's people from the ages of 26 to 41 years old, roughly 20 22% of the population, just shy of 74 million Americans ready to buy in that age range. These folks also make up about 36% of the entire workforce, so roughly about a third of the full workforce out there is the millennial generation. Now, let's talk about paying down debt, because this is a big factor in what's prompting a lot of these people to move from sitting on the sidelines into the stage of home ownership. Well, while the youngest millennials have about $23,000 on average in student loan debt, those who are in their 30s have about $800, those in their 40s, no debt at all. Most of that debt is actually now paid off or in the process of getting close to getting paid off. Think about that in terms of freeing up that monthly income in all of those households and those millions of people to put now towards home ownership or saving up for the down payment for future home ownership. Now we have to mention that student loan debt forgiveness as well as stimulus payments over the last year also account for some of this debt pay down and as you'll see later, it's accounting for a lot of the increased savings in this generation as well. Over the last year, through a combination of government programs, it is estimated that over a billion dollars of student loan debt has now been discharged or forgiven. That's over a billion dollars that was going simply to pay down student debt that is now freed up to move into the economy and in this case, we're talking about the economy of home ownership. Also, starting in March of 2020, those between the ages of 25 and 39 received over $380 million in stimulus checks from the federal government. An interesting note out of this is that 33% of those people use that money for paying down debt, and an additional 18% use the money for savings as well as home ownership. Speaking of savings, let's now tackle a myth about the millennial generation. The reality is, Millennials have wealth. According to data, in 2019, the median net worth of those young people aged 34 to 44 was $91,000. Only several years before that, 2016, that same group had a net worth of $60,000. That's an increase of $30,000 of average net worth in that specific group. Now, according to a 2021 Charles Schwab survey, the median age of people who began investing during the pandemic was 35 years old. Prior to the pandemic, it was 48, so we see here young people are starting to get into the market at a much bigger pace than those who are older than them. In fact, millennials make up 51% of new investors post pandemic. All right, so what's happening? So they're paying down debt, they're increasing their wealth, they're starting to invest. 
what are the millennials doing now that they're on this track? Well, frankly, they are starting households, getting married, and having children. All of these things require an increase of space. In fact, during the pandemic, the number of households of people between the ages 31 to 44 getting married increased by 1.3 million households. And according to the National Association of Realtors, those married couples between the ages of 31 and 40 were the most likely to enter home ownership and to be out looking for and buying homes. Couple this with the fact that the largest group of non-married couples that are buying a home were average age 22 to 30, you can see this group is solidly moving into the idea of ownership they are in the market and they're here to stay. All right, the last factor here, and it is an important one, it's something that we've talked about on a couple of videos recently here, is this historic low interest rate market, making home ownership not only more available to more people, but definitely more affordable for young people as they're entering the market, which is allowing them to buy more home for the same amount of money than they would years ago when interest rates were higher. In fact, in 2020, as the Fed cut interest rates to try to stabilize and increase the economy, home ownership surged in the millennial generation. Over this last year, they accounted for the largest share of new homeowners, which was 37% of new homeowners in the year 2020. All right, so now we've talked about the reasons why the millennials are in fact one of the most important groups of buyers right now, but what is it looking like going into the future? Well, over the next couple of years, millennials are gonna finally start hitting that critical peak earning period in their life of ages 45 to 55. This means that the millennials who are already paying down their debts, they're already starting to buy homes, they're already increasing their savings and their investments, they're going to now move into their peak earning years, meaning earning more than they have been along this journey. Now, as this article points out, we shouldn't discount the fact that we have now normalized working from home, which has added more and more to the millennial particular demand for new home ownership as they're looking to increase their space. They want a space for work. And in fact, I can tell you from my own experience, I can't tell you how many countless clients I've worked with over this past 12 months who have said as they're looking for homes, I need a home that has a space that I can see or envision as my office. Now, a study that was done last April showed that 55% of millennials are counting on or really wanting to hold on to working from home in the post-pandemic era. Considering that working from home is probably here to stay for the long haul in the foreseeable future, and we see already in the commercial market a lot of repurposing of what was once office space and there's looking for new ideas and new purposes for those buildings, we can imagine that this is gonna be a home run for the market for the millennials who are looking for that space. They're looking for a space that's their own that they can not only live in, but work from. All right guys, in summary, I think when we look at the fact that millennials are in fact an incredibly viable, incredibly strong group of buyers, you look at their age of where they're at and over the next decade, them moving into prime earning years, I think this is gonna be a slam dunk for them continuing to drive a strong housing market, continuing to drive prices and holding them strong. That said, it doesn't come without its challenges. Anytime that there's going to be an increase of interest rates, for example, or if there were some other major event that would affect employment numbers, that could have a negative impact on their ability to do that. Also, we should know that they are still competing with a much wealthier class of the boomer generation that are out there as well as the Gen Xers. But all in all, things are really shaping up to have this be a trend into the future. If you are a millennial or if you're not a millennial, if you know a millennial and you are in the housing market right now and you've been having a good time buying a house or you're struggling to buy a house or if you're just thinking about buying a house, go ahead and drop a comment below. I would love to hear from you and engage with you on this topic. I find it incredibly interesting. I'm gonna be very excited to follow this into the future, particularly because it is our generation. I hate to admit it, uh, starting to feel a little bit old, but guys, I'm 40 years old. We've become our parents, so um, all of those anecdotes about living in your parents' basement, guys, I'm on my third home. I imagine a lot of you are too. So let's hear from you down below and we'll get started on that topic. As always, everybody, thanks so much for sticking around. I hope you found value in this video. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you and I will see you next time.